Here's another part we're going to model for system view in Genesis. It's a limiter. The data sheet looks like this, and it gives very, very little information about the part, a little bit of data in a table, and a few of these performance graphs. And we're going to take what's available on the data sheet and put it into a custom part, like you see down here in the lower right. Here's the custom symbol we created for this limiter. And it's being modeled by an RF amp. The reason why is because when you look at its transfer characteristics, its characteristic curve, in this case, P out versus P in, you notice there's a linear region and then this is the weird compression region and a bump and then it goes into limiting and it even has some droop after this. It's a very customized and specific curve for this kind of a part. And whenever you have that, that's a great candidate for the AM to AM model. So let's dive into this part and see what's inside of the symbol. It's just one of these RF amps, which is set to the nonlinear modeling mode called compression curve. And when you set this, that means that you're going to furnish a list of input powers in the AM, AM, in, P in power parameter and a list of corresponding gains in the AM, AM data parameter. So those two describe the blue curve you saw in this graph down here. Actually, more correctly, they describe this, this curve because the model wants to have gain, not P out versus P in power. So you can see there's a lot of points from plus 5 to plus 30 dBm. The reason why is because the vendor gave us that data in this graph right here. They told us exactly what the power output would be when the input power goes from plus 5 to plus 30, but that's all they give us. They don't tell us anything about the behavior below plus 5 except for the fact that they did make S data, S parameters available for this part. So given that, we had to sort of infer or deduce or guess at some of these other points down at these lower input powers. And this is a great example of having to do that. A lot of times the vendor will give you very sparse data and you're going to have to come up with other data points just kind of based on some of the other data you can glean for this part. And that's what we did. We got the small signal gain from the S data. That was easy. But some of these other points in the transition region, we kind of had to guess at. And a couple of these points were verified with some measurements we made. But that was that was. That was very, very uh, difficult to, to match some of these points. And so when you look at our MATLAB, you see on lines 11 through 16, we're taking the S2P file and separating the four S parameters and putting those into the model where limiter gain, which is nothing more than S21, goes into the G parameter and limiter S11 and limiter S22, those go into the S11 and S22 parameters of the model. And I think uh, this R ISO parameter is the S12 that we put into the RISO parameter. All right, so that takes care of the small signal behavior. Now we have to do the large signal, which is basically describing these graphs up here. Now you notice that on the data sheet, the vendor did give us three graphs at three different frequencies, 950, 1500, and 2050 megahertz. So we made use of that and we made, we entered the three curves at those three frequencies as well. Those are the purple, green, and orange curves on this graph. So how did we do that? Well, the first thing is to create the list of input powers on line 19. And you can see there's a point at minus 20, 
minus 10 dBm, minus 5, and 0, very sparse, before we get to the fine part of the curve between plus 5 and plus 30 in 0.5 dB steps. That's good, but this down here is going to be kind of doubtful. But we went ahead and did it, and we gave the corresponding gains at each one of those input powers. We did this at the three frequencies, 950, 1500, and 2050. And each time we describe the list of gains, we glued together the gain, that's the y-axis, with the power in, that's the x-axis. And so at the end of this, we have three um, lists, gain underscore and then the frequency at the three different frequencies, and we're just graphing those. Those are the purple, green, and orange curves. But there's this yellow curve there, and that yellow curve is being interpolated at the simulation frequency, at the frequency we set in the source here. And so RF freak is a tunable variable. I'm going to go here into the tune window, and I'm going to tune that variable and watch what the yellow curve is doing. It's being interpolated or extrapolated when I go outside at the current simulation frequency. So I'm tuning the frequency, and each time instantly we get a new interpolated curve. So that's going to be kind of nice. We'll have a, a, a new correct and custom curve at every any frequency we choose for the source. And how is this done? Well, going back to the MATLAB, we're using the same technique that we show in the app note available for this model on the Keysight website. Um, we glue together the three curves into one big um, two-dimensional list, and we have a list of the three frequencies of the curves, and then we tell the interp1 MATLAB function about the three frequencies, the three gain curves, and we feed it our current simulation frequency, that's the variable RF freak, and we get back a linear interpolation with extrapolation if you want. And that new variable, GC curve, is what we put into our RF amp model here. So GC curve is being used for the AM AM data. Let me open up this RF amp so that you can see how we did that inside. We simply type in the name of the variable right into the AM AM data parameter. And so that's how we get the yellow curve into the model. The result is the blue curve coming out of the model. The yellow is what we, we requested for the limiter's behavior. The blue is what we actually got when we ran a simulation that swept the input power to the limiter. And it's not exactly uh, on top of each other. There's a little bit of error, especially in this area right here. There's a maximum error of about two-thirds of a dB. This is something we just have to live with because, remember, we didn't have many points describing this part of the curve. We did what we could given the data that the vendor supplied for us, but that's as good as we can do. And so we kind of have to live with the fact that the, 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 the model is doing its best to follow the yellow curve, but there's always going to be a little bit of, of error. This is, a, this is a very common source of error when you have very sparse data available to you. But in this case, we took it. It was the best we could do, and in the end, everybody was happy with the performance of this model, which is a much more realistic limiter than we had before.